Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another day Every day I open my eyes I see morning light, morning light I know that the Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before he take me away behind to the grind Success on me Pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. It is a very gray and overcast, damp Thursday here in the beautiful Dangriga. I hope that conditions are a little bit better where you are. The entire horizon from north to south, as uh, far as my eyes could see, <laughs> looks very gray and ominous, like there's going to be some rain. Not too long from now. It's been drizzling and raining off and on since before I went to sleep last night actually and it looks like it will continue during the day today. I do hope you're having a blessed and beautiful day where you are despite the weather. We're going to kick things off this lovely lovely Thursday morning with one entitled While the I Seek. Let's have a listen. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
that one there, a lively one to wake us up this morning from the Youths in Cage School Primitive Baptist Church. That one there from 1790 originally. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue then getting our words here up on screen for today. I don't know why I look so disheveled. Getting our words here up on screen today. Let's see if I could make that happen here in three, two, and in one. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Words from Psalm number 19, verse 14. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, pardon me, we are on page 35 using versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle to Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verses 1 through to 8. It can be found on page 35 in our Books of Common Prayer. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains, are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbours, or things that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we say, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 34, and leading us in the reading of the psalm for this morning is Mrs. Carol Moore. Let's have a listen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life 
and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. We want to thank Miss Carol for leading us in the reading of the psalm this morning. And Miss Carol is reading in honor of her sister, Miss Beverly Williams, who is celebrating a birthday today. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, The Song of the Redeemed, based on Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16, verses 1 through 12. And leading us in the reading, in honor of her sister's birthday, is Mrs. Carol Moore. Let's. Have a listen. Today's gospel comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 1 through 12. The Pharisees and Sadducees came, and to test Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation ask for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Then he left them and went away. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch out and beware of the east of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They said to one another, It is because we have brought no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said, You of little faith, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousand, and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets you gathered? How could you fail to perceive that I was not speaking about bread? Beware of the east of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he had not told them to beware of the east of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Mrs. Moore for leading us in the reading, and we want to wish Miss Bev a happy and blessed birthday today. Getting our words back here on screen then. Mm. Jesus today seems to be in a little bit of a mood and rightly so. Um, I hope it's up to the words that is. Um, he is, <laughs> let me tell you, these disciples, man, if if they were my my two fives in this day and age, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would do with them. But Matthew chapter 16 is all about revealing who Jesus is and what he came to do. But not revealing it in other people's time, revealing it, of course, in God's time. And in Matthew chapter 16, we're going to find confessions, we're going to find talks of churches, we're going to find talks of cross, 
I mean, okay, he begins off. Now, remember, we closed off yesterday, uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 29 to 39. We closed off with the second feeding. So it's the second miracle of the feeding. And it's, it's, it's showing Jesus's authority over all of Matthew chapter 15, really, showing Jesus's authority over nature, over creative things, and over illness and demonic powers. We saw all of that in Matthew chapter 15. Now here in Matthew chapter 16, what we're going to see is a continuation of the revelation of who Jesus is. The scribes and the Pharisees in chapter 15 had come to question his authority. The people in his own hometown were questioning his authority. And then now what we have is we have the disciples seemingly not understanding what is taking place. The Gentile healing that we would have heard of in Matthew chapter 15 reveals to us that the ministry of Jesus is not just about Jesus coming to the Jews. He is now expanding this ministry outside of Jerusalem and including Gentiles in it. So the revelation of who Jesus is, the revelation of what he came to do and who he came to do it for is all being played out. It started in Matthew chapter 15 and it's going to continue now for us in Matthew chapter 16. And the first thing he does is he gives a warning against the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Why? Because the Sadducees and the Pharisees are coming seeking a sign from Jesus. Now, they are there. Hmm? They hear the teachings. They see the healings. They see the miracles. They have a good idea of who he is, but they do not want to lose their grip and authority for their position within the society. And so this Jesus is a challenge for them. And so they come to him and they ask him for a sign from heaven in order to test him. Yes? Mm. <laughs> Why? They are working together. Yes? And the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't always get along. Hmm? They were long-standing enemies. Yes, they had the root of their teachings was Yahweh, but they had the different ideas as to how religious ordinances and practices and beliefs should be carried out. So these were long-standing enemies, but they are working together. And it's an extraordinary phenomenon to find the combination of Pharisee and Sadducee because beliefs and policies were diametrically opposed. The Pharisees lived according to the smallest point of the oral and scribal law, and the Sadducees received only the written words of Hebrew structures. Pharisees believed in angels and a resurrection. Sadducees did not. Pharisees were not a political, a political party, but they were prepared to live under any government that would, would leave them alone in order that they could practice their religion. The Sadducees were aristocrats. And they collaborated with the Romans to keep the wealth and the power that they had. You understand? So they were, they, were, they were totally from different streams. They're coming together, even though they are long-standing enemies, shows that they're coming against somebody that they regard as a serious threat. Now, Jesus has no wealth like the Sadducees do. And Jesus is not looking for buying from the Roman authority like the Pharisees are and is not looking to take um, religious rule over anything. Jesus is just being Jesus. He's being the son of God, the Messiah that was sent, sent to be. But that is a threat to them. Hmm? The Pharisees had been looking for a long time for this Messiah, waiting. And of course, they are blind to see that he's in front of them. The Sadducees really didn't matter to them either way who this Messiah was. But this Messiah, or the claim that this person was the Messiah, was now coming in and disrupting the order of things. How dare you say that the poor should be equal to us, that everybody is the same? The Sadducees wouldn't have that. And yet, despite all these differences, Jesus brought them together. Although they didn't come together for a good reason, they came together in opposition of Jesus. But they came together nonetheless. Yes? And they come asking him for a sign, testing him, wanting a sign from heaven. And ridiculously, in my opinion, because Jesus had done so many signs and yet they remain unconvinced. They are looking for a sign from heaven, maybe the calling down of fire, mm -hmm. preferably on a Roman legion. Yeah? They were looking to see some sign from heaven here on earth. But Jesus had done so much. 
giving sight to the blind, making sure that the, the, the mute could talk, giving listening to the deaf, putting back limbs where limbs did not where the limbs were not working, withered hands, feeding the multitudes, miraculous catches of fish, raising from the dead. And they were still busy looking for a sign. I mean, he had been asked for a sign before in, in Matthew chapter 12, you know. And in response, he had pointed them to the sign of Jonah. You remember that? And tradition held that a sign done on earth could be confirmed or could be a counterfeit from Satan. So signs done from heaven coming from the sky were assumed to be from God. And Jesus tell them, Nasa, I ain't going to give you nothing. When it is evening, you talk about it's going to be fair weather tomorrow because the sky is red. When it is morning, you say it's going to be a stormy day because the sky is red. How is it you know to interpret the sky, but you can't interpret the signs of the times? You are an evil and adulterous generation and you're asking a sign, but no sign will be given for you except the sign of Jonah. And then he left them and walked away. Hmm? They felt confident about predicting weather from the signs that they saw around them, but were blind regarding Jesus' messianic credentials that existed right before their eyes. And Jesus condemned their hypocrisy. Hmm? And, and <sighs> Jesus wasn't the only one to notice their hypocrisy, you know. The Jews of Jesus' day had a pro proverbial saying, a proverb, right? That if all the hypocrites in the world were di divided into ten, Jerusalem would contain nine of the ten parts. People saw their hypocrisy. And Jesus was telling them, you know what? For religious leaders, you should be the one to see the sign of my coming. There were prophecies, there were circumstances, there are evidences that should have made it clear to them that the Messiah had come. You remember Jesus' birth, the Magi's? The Magi's had a sign. The sign for the Magi's was the star that they followed. Now, Magi's were king makers. They were the ones who had the authority and had the wisdom. To say, this one will make a good king, that one will make a good king. So people used to worship the Magi and, and pay them homage. Take them big gifts. Because if the Magi say you are king, you are king. But in this instance, instead of the people going to the Magi to try to pay them homage, because of their skills, the Magi got the sign. The Magi knew how to interpret the sign of the star and followed it until they found a king that they did not name. This king was revealed to them through the sign. They knew how to read the sign of the times. These Pharisees and scribes missed it. They missed it completely when the child was born. And it took strangers from the East, not even Jews, to recognize who the Messiah was and when he arrived on the scene. And they had been blinded since the birth of Jesus. They claimed to know to interpret the skies, but missed the biggest sign. And they were still missing the sign. A wicked and adulterous generation seeking after a sign. The statement of Jesus reminds us that signs alone converts nobody. It is easy to place far too much confidence in signs and wonders as tools to bring people to the faith in Jesus Christ. But then, there's a problem. Not that the signs themselves are weak, but that the people who need a sign are the ones who are weak in faith. And the Bible gives repeated examples of those who saw remarkable signs, but yet didn't believe. I mean, think of Pharaoh and the Israelites coming out of Egypt. How much more sign Pharaoh would have been hmm? Right. And Jesus tells them, no sign will be given to you except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he's promising a sign that would have a power to bring people to faith. His resurrection. Because that is the sign of the prophet Jonah. Jonah, remember, was swallowed by this wheel. And literally should have been dead inside the fish for three days. But what? On the third day, what the fish did? Spewed him out and sent him back. A sort of resurrection per se. 
That's the sign of Jonah. The sign of Jonah is his disappearance for three days and his returning back to life after being gone. And that's what Jesus was saying. The sign of Jonah, me, I will be swallowed up by the earth. And in three days time, I will be resurrected and come back. And this is the second time Jesus tells them about the prophet and the sign of the prophet Jonah. He told them in Matthew chapter 12, I believe it is somewhere between verse 30 and verse 40, something like that. He was clearly explaining about his resurrection. Hmm? They missed the sign of the times. And after he calls them out, he leaves them and goes away. And then the 12. I don't even want to start on the 12. When the disciples reached the other side, they forgot that they had brought bread. Now, basket left over from the last feeding, you know. The last thing we heard is one of the feedings with lots of basket left over. They come and they forget to bring any bread. And Jesus just had this encounter with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he's riled up over it, it seems. And so when the boys come, they are thinking about physical bread that they forget to bring. Mm? And Jesus says to them, you know something, boys? Watch out and beware for the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And what? Because their minds are preoccupied with earthly things and their belly, the boys miss it. After the preceding conflict with the religious leaders, he's given them a warning using the metaphor of leaven. But they miss it. And leaven is, is, was constantly used as a picture of sin and corruption at Jesus' time. Hmm? It was a metaphor, an expression for evil influence. And what the boys say? Oh, he did talk about watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees because we forget to bring bread. That's a strange concern after Jesus had just recently miraculously feed both 5,000 and 4,000 people. I mean, could they not understand that if he could feed 5,000, 4,000, he could feed them? They didn't understand all here and his use of leaven as a metaphor. You know, and I blame them, you know, because memory is short term for a lot of people. Our memories are naturally like an hourglass, no sooner filled with good instructions and experiments than running out again and needing to be flipped. Yes? They, they they didn't understand. He was not talking to them about physical bread. And they're saying to one another in his presence, it's because we have brought no bread. And Jesus becoming aware of it becomes upset with them. You of little faith, why are you talking about not having bread? I mean, do you still not understand? Have you so quickly forgotten the five loaves and the five for the five thousand and how many baskets we gathered and the seven loaves for the four thousand and how many baskets we gathered? And there you see Jesus himself pointing out what I did um, a few days ago. It's two different miracles, two different feelings, right? Mm -hmm. But how quickly had they forgotten? Why are they worried that God would provide for their physical needs when he had provided for the physical needs of so many? How is it that they are so slow to understand and to perceive? Hmm? And he says, how can you fail to perceive that I was not speaking about bread? Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And then they finally understood. Jesus impressed upon them the importance of being on guard against false teachings, especially that in the service of religious hypocrisy. He really was charging his disciples with ignorance, yeah, because they didn't understand that he was using material things to illustrate spiritual things, parables. He charged their unbelief because they were concerned with the supply of physical bread when Jesus had miraculously provided bread on several occasions. He was also charging them with forgetfulness because they seemed to forget that what Jesus had done before in regards to providing bread could be done again. And those are three things we have to be mindful of. We can't be caught being ignorant. Yeah? And not ignorant in the Belizean Creole sense. When you say ignorant in Belizean Creole sense, it means slow, um, quick to anger and without patience. No. Ignorance is without knowledge. We can't be caught without knowledge. We have to know about God through the study of God's word like we're doing now. We can't be caught in unbelief. 
We have to stop being worried about physical and material things and start to remember that our hope is fixed on a God who can provide ways where there seem to be no ways. And we can't be forgetful. We can't forget that what God has done, he is doing and will continue to do because he is God and he is unchangeable and for all times. And you know, sadly, some of us get sidetracked with false teachings and doctrines and we get hype up over certain preachers and preachings because of our ignorance, because of our unbelief and because of our forgetfulness. Just like the disciples. I love listen, listening to missionaries, whether they are Jehovah Witness missionaries, whether they are missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And one of the things that I always find interesting is that they come with a, a predetermined script. My job is to convert you to my religion, not so much to convert you to Christianity. And they come with a preordained script of what they are supposed to present. And if we try to deviate from that script, if we try to delve into Bible, hmm, then you create a problem. And then most of the time, conflict seems to want to stir up its head because you're preventing them from doing or following their manuscript. But if you don't know proper teaching, if you are ignorant to the things of the Bible, if your belief is easily shaken because you're concerned about material possessions and things and not focused on the kingdom of God. If you are forgetful of all that God has done to bring you where you are, and if you are forgetful of all that God has done and is capable of doing, then when these types of teachings come, you can and more than likely will be shaken. We can't be found lacking that way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You cannot fail to perceive what the Lord is and has been showing us all along. We cannot ask for a sign of the times because the sign of the times is all around us. Who places the sun in the sky? Who tells the waves where to stop? Who brings rain today and sun tomorrow? Who has rescued you time and time again? If it is not your God, I don't know who. It took the disciples a while to understand that Jesus was not talking about physical yeast and physical bread. That he was talking about false teachings. You need to be awake. You need to be alert. Because false teachings and deceptions are everywhere in abundance. Your mind your heart, your faith needs to be securely fixed on the word of God. Not on the teachings of a particular individual. Not so much on customs and beliefs and practices that are not in line with God's will. You need to be fixed and focused on the word of God given as a guide for us. And if you're not Work at it, for we do not want you to be caught in ignorance, nor unbelief, nor forgetfulness. Amen. Let us continue then to profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold him now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collet for today is the collet for Papa 27. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a call it for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires and incline our hearts to keep your law. Guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today in our world cycle of prayer, we remember and pray for the people of Nicaragua, and in our ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the Anglican Church of Korea in Korea. And now let us turn to our own personal prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings for the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Mr. Sean Lewis, Mr. Stephen Mariano, Ms. Rena Castillo, Ms. Leila Rosado, Ms. Beverly Williams, Reverend Joseph King, and Ms. Gertrude Jacobs. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Salim, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Derla, Miss Janet, Miss Beryl, Miss Soila. Miss Lisa, Miss Christine, Miss Aislin, Miss Des, Miss Sylvia, Miss Monica, Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, and Miss Molly. We pray for Miss Amy, Miss Teresa, Miss Althea, Miss LaShawn, Miss Jessica, Miss Celestina, Miss Gloria, Miss Marva, Miss Marta, and Miss Betty. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby. Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Faith, Miss Everly, Miss Myrtle, Miss Geraldine, Miss Lorraine, Miss Delvarine, Miss Elma, Miss Maud, Miss Alma, Miss Jean, and Miss Priscilla. We remember and pray for Miss Beryllin, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alair, Miss Nina, Miss Leonore, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Patricia, Miss Salome, Miss Toya, Miss Joyce, Miss Marcia, Miss Ismay, Miss Joan, Miss Ulice, Miss Lisa T, Miss Rita, Miss Louise, Miss Elena, Miss Fiona, Miss Kakim, Miss Kelia, Miss Velina, Reverend Ilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Shelma Dean, Reverend Linda, Miss Dominic, Miss Tanisha, Miss Brenda G, Miss Bernadine, Miss Sandra, Miss Gretel, and Miss Carol. We pray for Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie. Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, 
Miss Maisie, Miss Charlene, Miss Megan, Miss Tessa, Miss Dillis, Miss Julianne, Miss Shanice, Miss Kimberly, Miss Susan, and Miss Zinzi. In our prayers, we pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey. We pray for Mr. Tony and Mr. Gary. We remember and pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Carlos, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Walter, Mr. Ismael, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Robert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Pablo, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Sean. We pray for Bishop Nicasio, Mr. Ambrose, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Zabaranis, Sir Colville, Mr. Kirk, Mr. Russell, and Father Constantine. In our prayers, we remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, Mr. Trevor, Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Bishop Wright, Mr. Glenn, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Orvin, Mr. Richard, Mr. Loyal, Mr. Kieron, Mr. Marlon, Mr. Albert, Mr. Paul, Mr. Donald, and Mr. Ted. In our prayers, we continue to pray for healing for persons who would have contracted COVID-19, those in their various forms of isolation, those who are recovering from post-COVID syndrome. We continue to give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine and we pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. We continue to ask for God's blessings and his protection and enablement on all medical professionals who are in who perform their medical duties in both public and private institutions. We remember all of our adlers, our cleaners, our cooks, our people in administrative offices, our pharmacists, our lab technicians, our radiologists. We pray for all our doctors and nurses. We pray especially for Dr. Zidalgo, Ariaga, Lawrence, Molina, Shogreen, Sosa, Mongia, Ken, Young, Cuellar, Arana, Arnold, Manzanero, Joseph, and Eck. We pray for Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Lino, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julia, and Nurse Ashley. In our prayers, we pray for persons who fear there is none to pray for them and for those who for whatever reason, cannot bring themselves to pray for themselves. We pray for them, saying together, Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Mr. Apollonario Villafranco Jr., the family of Ms. Nicole Clear, the family of Ms. Joan Gar, the family of Mr. Aaron Callis, the family of Mr. Peter Serva, the family of Mr. Elbert Flowers, the family of Miss Margaret Enriquez, the family of Mr. Mike Cruella, the family of Mr. Godwin Moody, the family of Mr. Wilford Pascasio, and the family of Miss Mary Lou Stacy. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for returning rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Elisa, Tammy, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Angel, Paige, Garrett, Freedom, Rihanna, Kai, Arian, Jamal, and Tiffany. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Emil, Prince, Candy, Christopher, Charles, S., Charles, C., Sam, Gavin, Pishan, and Derek. We continue to remember and pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society. We continue to remember and pray for the poor, the needed, the elderly, persons with pre-existing health conditions, 
persons battling HIV and AIDS, persons fighting against cancer of its various kinds, persons fighting against mental health challenges, persons fighting against lupus, persons fighting against drug abuse, substance abuse, and its relating ailments. We pray for God's protection, provision, and healing to be upon you. In our prayers, we remember the various branches of our security forces. We pray for our government. We pray for our Prime Minister, our Governor General, the Leader of the Opposition, all our members of Parliament. We remember and pray for our ambassadors. Pray God's protection over them as they represent our country. We pray for all persons in positions of public trust and authority, praying especially for our public officers, especially those who traverse the roads to get to work. We continue to pray for our churches and our church leadership. We pray for the private sector and all non-governmental organizations, all who are involved in any form of humanitarian aid. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those who are ravaged by the effects of war and civil unrest, praying for the repose of the lives lost and the comfort for family members who would have been ripped apart from their families. We continue to pray for protection against the ravages of natural disaster and for all persons in their various stages of recovery, even as we pray for protection for ourselves and our region. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions this morning by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commands. But under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence, as well as in the presence of Almighty God. We want to thank you for joining us, and we want to remind you of what our broadcast schedule is like for the remainder of the day. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30. We have Bible study at 7.30 p.m., and then we close off the day at 9 p.m. with Compline. We invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are able. And in case you miss any of these scheduled broadcasts, you can always revisit the Facebook pages of the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Belize in order to catch a recap of these broadcasts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, we have a few notices and announcements here that we have to go through. The first of which is the annual cultural mass. Christ the King Anglican Church cordially invites you to its annual cultural mass being celebrated, of course, at the parish church on Saturday, the 18th of November in 2023 at 6 p.m. You're invited to join us if you will be in the Dangriga area. You can dress in any of your cultural attire that you have and you can join us for this service that is one of worship and praise celebrating um, the Garifuna culture as well as the other cultures that have come to embrace this celebration. Then in addition, we want to remind you of the Light the Candle, the concert of joy, peace, love and hope that is going to be held on Saturday, December 2nd, 2023 at the Cathedral Church of St. John the Baptist. This concert happens on December the 2nd at 7 p.m. And there's a small donation of $20. If you are interested in tickets, you can call 227-3363, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. All right, then those, I believe, are all our notices for today. I want to thank you so much for joining me for Morning Prayer and for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace to dismissal, and then our final hymn. And let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a luncheon to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. 
take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. To close off this morning, there is a gospel acclamation that is used in Garifuna services. This one is called Agamba Wame, which translates to let us hear him. And that's the thing. If we do not listen for the word of the Lord, we will be able to be dissuaded and steered in the wrong direction by false teachings. So let us hear him. Let us listen to the word of God. Let us go and hear the words of Christ, because we know that teachings from him are sound. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and to bye for now. wonderful morning it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord for another day good morning me never good morning that's how everybody did do this wonderful morning it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I'm
everybody be you this wonderful morning It's another beautiful day Another beautiful day.